Hello and welcome back guys to another video here on Wild Warner Outdoors. This is my 2019 Nevada mule deer hunt. Very exciting. I was able to get permission to hunt on an alfalfa farm that my brother has hunted before to hunt for mule deer. My dad ended up driving us in a different vehicle because he, in the last video, was not able to fill his tag. So if I were to get a deer early, um, he was able to head up to his unit to hunt for a few days. But in this video, I'm going to kind of explain to you guys what's going on, how I'm hunting. Um, it was a really exciting hunt, really fun, really challenging. Thank you guys for joining this video. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Let's get into it. Alright, so the first morning we got up and it was a chilling, like 14 degrees out. So they're like three inches of alfalfa and then uh, some brush and a fence line. That's really all the cover we have to work with. So it makes things a little difficult, but it uh, if you play your cards right, you can get pretty close to these deer. Glass, the farm, spotted a group of deer. Um, I tried to get some footage of it, but it may have been too early. And we thought, you know what, we couldn't see if there's any bucks in there, but let's just make a move on them now. And if there's a buck in there, we'll see him, if, and it will hopefully be close enough. If there's not a buck, then we'll back out and uh, let him be. So I'm using my GoPro on my gun, but cold weather and batteries do not mix well, so I'd only get like five second shots. Basically what happened was we uh, tried to make a move on these deer. They looked like they disappeared, and all of a sudden we look over into the brush. There's kind of a in-between stage of the two fields with just like some weeds and stuff. We're just walking around kind of like, hmm, yeah, they must have jumped off the farm, right? And all of a sudden, 100 yards away from us is this group of deer. We're like, oh, okay. So we get the binos on them. We're looking. Don't see any obvious big antler bucks. And I wasn't looking for a big buck. We just wanted to see there was no bucks. So we said, okay, let's just back off. Let them feed. Let them do whatever. So we kind of backtracked about 400 yards away. And I said, you know what, let's just put the spotting scope on them. So I get the spotting scope set up and realize there's actually two bucks in that group. One of them being a small forked horn and the other being a one antler deer. One, it was a three point on one side and I couldn't see any antler on the other side. I don't know if it didn't grow out another antler or if it uh, had broken off and you just couldn't see it. So I decided to make a stock on 20 yards into it. I'm crawling across the alfalfa, army crawling. And they just bust off the property. So I hop over the fence and I can see them just running as fast as they can into this flat, into the brush and they kind of disappear and I never got a shot. But I found a perfect spot that I can lay prone and I could see this entire valley, this entire gourd. And so we just decided, you know what? They, we saw them go into the brush. I never saw them go up into the hills. We thought they're probably gonna be there by evening, let's just set up right at that spot and hopefully they'll come right to us without us knowing. That evening, I was able to get, we set up those bucks, or the, that group, same group of deer, I could see old, old one horn <laughs> coming through, but there's an opening, there's a, the brush really thins out right as you get close to the property, and so uh, right through there, they would just run as fast as they could, and they were too far for me to shoot anyways, so I ended up not getting a shot on those deer, or I made a move to where I thought they would end up in the field, and they never showed up. Um, sun went down headed back and then I just said I'll walk this fence line 
there's those group of deer. So I basically tried to make a move on them and chased them off the property. Um, so yeah, the next morning we got up, we glassed the farms. We couldn't see a single deer on the farm. So I thought, you know what? Those must be the only deer coming through this time of day, this this time. So we thought, man, they must have just spooked them off and they never came back. So I was kind of bummed. We said, you know what? Let's just walk this uh, the the field line and we'll get to the fence line and look over into the into the valley, into the gorge, and um, maybe they'll be there, come make their way up onto the farm, or maybe making off the their way off the farm. Who knows? Getting over there and about 600 yards away, I can see a group of deer right there on the edge of the property. So I drop down. My dad's back me about 100 yards. He drops down. And uh, I just kind of make start making this crawl. I had my binos on me and my gun, and I would just walk the edge of the, uh, of the field and every 10 feet put my binos up. They never had me pegged once. Um, there was actually a, multiple bucks in there. I saw a smaller forked horn and a really big... A really nice buck. I'm pretty sure it was a four point that the farmer had said he had seen on the property before, but um, they made their way off the property. So I said, you know what, I got to get there now because they they follow the pattern of the other deer. They're gonna run as fast as they can across that that flat gorge, and they're gonna be gone before I'll ever get a shot. And so I hightailed it over, hopped the fence line. Basically, I'm just walking across, and 20 yards from me, there's a buck and a doe have me pegged just staring at me so I start to get down and as they do that I pull my gun up and start to like drop to a knee and as they do that they run off so I run to where they were and that's another kind of uh, point so I go over to that point I see eight deer running to the left and I see eight deer running to the right I kind of do a double take and I spot a deer to my left and that's a buck so I drop down go prone I had one in the chamber they were kind of running up it goes really flat and then sh straight uphill and then the fields right here so they kind of started running up and they stopped right there and it gave me a perfect cording way shot I could just hear the whop that bullet made when it made impact and I knew I hit him immediately he ran up on top of that hill right level with the fields and then just fell over and died <laughs> all right everybody I freaking got it done today October 12th biggest body deer I've ever shot not the biggest antlers but that's not what I'm that's not why I'm a hunter it's not about the antlers long story short I don't think any of it got on film because of cold batteries and all that good stuff but uh, basically what happened was we got up this morning um, couldn't see any deer on the property so we walked around the biggest field on the property and um, we're just gonna walk this fence line because we know this this fence line is where these deer come through. We get about probably 500 yards of where I'm at now, and I just drop down because I see a group of like 12 plus deer, and I figured it was the same group we've been seeing, but I was wrong because this deer was not in that group, and I saw other deer that were not in that group. Um, this deer I don't think was the biggest of the group. Basically, what happened was I crawled through the field as or through the edge of the field as they were still feeding on the alfalfa. They slowly worked their way off the property, or off the fence, oh yeah, off the property under the fence. And so I booked it on the other side of the fence onto this public property and uh, kind of just started walking over because I figured they, every time we've seen them between here and the thick brush, they've been running, hauling ass. So I figured that's what they were gonna do. So I wasn't necessarily 100% sure if they were gonna be doing that. But I get over the hill and I just see what I'm pretty sure it was this buck and a doe just staring at me, dead on. I'm like, oh God, I threw my gun up. Almost, if it was stayed there, I probably would have taken a frontal shot, which wouldn't have been bad, but not as uh, easier to hit as a quartering or broadside shot. So I get over the hill, drop down on, drop down on ground prone, and about 90 yards away, this deer runs up with about eight does or so. He stops, gives me a perfect quartering shot, took a breath, boom, sent it right behind the shoulder, back a little ways, exited right out of the shoulder, perfect. I could not ask for a better shot. This is what I wanted. I don't necessarily need a big rack. I don't need any of that. I want a clean ethical kill. So I'm working on the tag right now. My dad's hiking back to the truck. We're just gonna throw this thing in the truck and uh, we'll gut it here, throw it in the truck, and then take it back and skin her out, skin them out, quarter them up, get it back home for the butchering process. Um, so 
This has definitely got to be the biggest body of deer I've ever shot. One of the biggest body of deer I've ever seen. But uh, I couldn't be more stoked, guys. This is how I made two failed stocks yesterday or attempts on deer and uh, really three um, and didn't get close enough, didn't get the right shot. So persistence is key in this game. So I am more than glad more than happy to take a buck like this. Um, such a beautiful animal, such a thick coat on this guy. I mean, I've never seen such a thick coat on a deer before, but it's cold. I mean, it's getting down in the teens at night, so they need this thick fur. But um, yeah, now we've got a lot of work ahead of us and um, I'm excited. You guys stay tuned to watch this whole process go down. This was wild. Yep, it's a male. Just gotta double check, you know? That's where that bullet exited right there. Did a number on him. heading out we're gonna go into town get a bite to eat and uh, my dad's going one way and I'm going the other I'm heading home and he's heading to go hunting again by himself hopefully he can get it done put the hammer down on a big old buck but this video has been a wild ride I'll keep I'll give you an update after we get into town get a bite to eat all right guys that is the end of this video I'm driving home right now my dad headed up to his unit to hopefully fill his dat his tag. He's got a day and a half to make it make it happen, make it work. Hopefully he'll find a buck he can shoot. But yeah, I've got the buck in the back, all quartered out. What an amazing hunt, getting able to hunt on that farm. Big thanks to that landowner. Um, I'll definitely be offering him plenty of meat from that my deer. And because um, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have been able to get that buck today. Yeah, so that's the end of this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far in the video, please consider subscribing down below because this is just the start of my hunting season. I have got two more hunts that are going to be really, really cool, and if we can be successful on them, they will be videos you will not want to miss. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. Hit that like button. It helps me out a lot. Um, but yeah, that's my 2019 Nevada mule deer hunt, hunting in the hay. Um, yeah, what a fun hunt I was able to take part in. Thanks so much to that landowner. He was a real super nice guy. He had actually told people to stop working on 
certain parts of the farm because of they didn't want to interfere, interfere with my hunt. So he's a really nice guy. Th big thanks to him. Stay tuned for the next videos coming up this season. Thank you guys so much for watching. And remember, stay wild.